Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to walk you through ray tracing with Unity 2018.3. I have an agenda that I'm going to be following today, which is I'm going to go through graphics card requirements, what some of the graphics card that you're going to need to be able to run ray tracing on your computer. I'm also going to be creating a new project from scratch, which HDRP. This HDRP component now includes ray tracing, which is different to what it was before. It used to be part of a GitHub and you had to incorporate it. So I'm going to show you how that works now. I'm also going to show you how to set up the HDRP and the XR wizard, how we can go through that. And it's going to help you set up the project. We're going to be creating a new scene, which is going to be similar to the scene that we're that I'm displaying right now. I'm also going to be importing a new car model. So this is hopefully going to teach you how to import a model that you already have and then changing some of the materials to use the HDRP materials and also ray tracing. And then lastly, we're just going to be creating the transparent reflective materials that you see on the bottom and also adjusting some of the materials that we see on the car. So the by the end of this video, we're going to basically have something similar to this. I'm going to try to match it as much as I can. I did this on my own, so I, I really like how it looks if you rotate everything it's rendering in real time which is which is really impressive knowing that this is all getting created with ray tracing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close out of this project we're going to start you know and do everything from scratch so that you know what you need to do so i'm going to go ahead and open up the unity hub and i'm going to just make sure that i have 2018.3.0 f3 so that's going to be the version that i'm going to require and then I'm just going to create a new project. I'm just going to call it Unity Ray Tracing Demo. And then just choose the location, hit Create. And this is going to get created. So while that is getting created, I'm going to go through the, some of the graphic card requirements. So let me go ahead and go into the Unity documentation. And if you're thinking about using ray tracing and your question might be, OK, what car can I use? And these are some of the cars that you could use. You can use the NVIDIA Volta. Titan X, or you can use any of these NVIDIA, like the 2060, the 2070. I have the 2080, so the example that I'm going to be showing you and that I show you has, you know, is running on a 2080 RTX. And then you can also, it looks like NVIDIA also provides a fallback, which means that you can use 1060s, 1070, and also the 1080, or any of the TI variants. So some of this documentation is going to be helpful, so I'm going to be putting the link of this information in the description of this video so that you can watch it and look at it on your own time. So let's see. So this is still running. I'm just going to continue as soon as this is completed. All right, guys. So it looks like this is completed. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up the next step. So the next step that we're going to go through, it's going to be setting up HDRP in the XR. So Unity provides an option that is going to allow us to do that pretty easily. So you can go into Render Pipeline. And we're going to go into the HD Render Pipeline Wizard. And depending on what you're doing, if you only want to use HDRP, you can use this tab. If you want to use HDRP with virtual reality, you can use this. And then if you want to use ray tracing, you're going to use this. So I'm going to use this one. And the way that this is going to work, and you already provided this so that it makes it easier for you, is you can go into every single one of these and hit Fix. And it's going to either incorporate new plugins into your scene or do changes in your scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on Fix All. And this is going to go through the entire project and see what it needs to change. And it looks like that fixed a couple of things. I'm going to click on Fix All one more time. Now that's going to be importing a few assets that we're going to need. So by the end of this, we're going to have to, it's going to fix everything. So I'm going to click on Restart Editor. Looks like it's requiring that we do that. It's going to reopen Unity. And, and this is pretty nice because it used to be that you had to go through, you know, different settings that were very obscure and they were all over the place. So with the wizard, you can just find everything in one place. So I'm going to go back into that. And now it looks like we have a couple of things here fixed. I'm going to click on fix all again. And it looks like we, okay, so it's going to tell us that we need to create a, a default scene, which, which is going to create a resource folder. Let's just create, click on create. And it's going to import a few more assets. So I'll just continue. I know this is going to take a little bit more time. So I'm just going to continue as soon as this is done. All right, guys. So it looks like it's finished building. And we have everything imported and updated. So I'm just going to close out of it. And the next thing that I'm going to focus on is making sure that I can create a new scene. So 
I don't want to change this one. This is the demo that Unity provides. I'm going to go into the Scenes folder, and then we're going to be creating a new scene. Let's go ahead and click on Create Scene. This one, I'm just going to call it the Car Scene. There we go. And then let's just double click it. Then I'm also going to be saving it just to make sure we don't lose our changes. I'm going to go into Scenes. And then this one is just going to be called call Car Scene. There we go. OK, so this has some of the components that we're going to be using, such as the HDR sky, the fog visual environment, like I said, and also post-processing. So I'm also going to need the car. So I'm going to go into the Asset Store. Let me just make this a little bigger so we can see everything. And let me go into my assets. I'm just going to type in here car. Hopefully, we can find it that way. Yep. We have this retro cartoon car, which I'm going to put in the description of this video so you guys know where to get it from. And I'm just going to import everything. So the cool thing about doing this is that this is going to be similar to what you need to do. So you might need to also bring a model. You might need to up update some of the materials. Also, this is an on error, so just ignore it for now. Unity is working on fixing that. All right, so now that we have that, I'm going to go into my scene view, and I'm going to look at my car. Let's go ahead and go into prefabs, drag and drop the car into the scene. I'm also going to be positioning everything in a way that we're going to be looking at the car. So I'm going to just align this, and we can probably just do that. So right now, this looks really bad, right? So we need to go into meshes, materials, select all the materials, go into my edit, render pipeline, and then we can do upgrade selected materials. Yes, go ahead and proceed. So now we have a car. It looks cool. And without any changes, we now have a cool looking car. So now the next thing that I need to do, and let me go ahead and add a new floor. So I'm just going to just call it the ground. And in the ground, I'm going to create a couple of materials. So let's go ahead and go into here and create a new folder. So I'm going to create a materials folder so we can keep everything organized. I'm going to right click on that. and. And if you if I'm going too fast, just you know, just make sure that you pause the video, go back to it. So this one is gonna be called no gown, let's call it ground. It's gonna be our ground material, drag it and drop it here. And then I'm also going to be resizing this. Let's go ahead and do 100, it's 2.1, and then 100. And then the next thing that I'll do is just bring it down a little bit so that it is up to I wanna have it up to you know, like it's touching the tire, but not going through the tire. I think that looks good. Yeah, I think that looks good. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do here is let's go ahead and change this base color to be dark. Awesome. So right now it looks great, right? But there's no shadows. There's no reflection. There's a lot of things that we still that we still need to do. So the the next thing that i want to do is i want to look at some of the materials and fix the materials on the car so i'm going to start with something as simple as changing the material on the on the actual ground but before we do that we're going to need to go to the sky and add a new component which is part of the ray tracing and this one is going to be there's two components that we're going to add we're going to add global illumination so i'm going to just enable that we're also going to be adding the another component which is going to be in ray tracing as well this one is going to be recursive rendering, and we're also going to enable that. And you're going to see that we're starting to get some, you know, some noise, and we need to change a couple of settings. I'm also going to realign the the camera view a little bit. Maybe I'm very picky when it comes to look and feel, so I want to make sure this looks. Let's go back a little bit more, and there we go. I think that works. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, right about there is fine. I'm also going to resize some of these gizmos because they're they're on the way. All right, so now we have you know we have a couple of more options in the in this component, which is the global illumination. So open up the global illumination, and we're going to be enabling the noise. I'm going to check that. I'm also going to be enabling the second pass, and also enabling that. So hopefully that will get rid of some of the some of the noise that was on the scene. Okay, so that's everything that we need to do there. Now I'm going to be concentrating on changing the materials on the floor. So let's go ahead and select the ground. And I keep calling it floor, but it's actually the ground. It's the same thing, right? <laughs> so now let's go ahead and look at the rendering pass on this material. I'm going to select ray tracing. And you know, as soon as I do that, everything looks better, right? And I'm also going to be enabling the metallic. Let's go ahead and bring it up all the way. And we can probably do something like this. OK, 
Okay, and I think that's all the stuff that we need to do there. Also, the other things that I want to do, just to make sure that we're using the shadows. So on the directional light, I'm going to be enabling the screen. So let me just go ahead and increment this. The screen space shadows. I'm also going to be enabling the ray trace shadows. So there we go. So I just want to get better a better look on the shadows on this, on this scene. And OK, that looks great. Now let's go ahead and focus on the on the actual materials on the car. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this component, open up the body. So you can see that this has few materials already. So it, there's a material on the actual body, which is which it has the car name and then a different name there. And then we also have a glass, right? So on the actual body, I'm going to go here and also change the rendering path, so just like I did before, so that, we, so that we now have ray tracing as well. You can also change the smoothness if you like. So the other thing that I'm going to do is the glass. I want to change that as well. I want to use ray tracing. So right now I set to default. Again, I'm going to change it to ray tracing. And if you look at that, that doesn't really give us a lot of, you know, there's no transparency whatsoever in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the refractional model. I'm going to select it to be thin. And as soon as I do that, we're going to get some really cool looking glass and see that how that looks. And the the other thing that it will be cool, let's go ahead and let's let's do this. So I want I want you to see how this is going to look. I'm going to go ahead and put another car behind it. And right about maybe we can just put it right about there. And then what I'm going to do is let's go ahead on the floor. We can make it let's make it bigger. I'm going to go a lot bigger. And there we go. So what I want to show you though is like as I as I change these as I change the material on the glass, it's going to, we're going to be able to go through and look through. So if I go back down here and we have the index on this, you can see how I'm changing. The other thing that I can also look is you can see that I'm look, being able to look at the other car. So if I change the index on refraction, we can see through the car, we're also changing this value, which is giving us a really cool, you know, a really cool augmentation on the glass. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, Exaggerate it just a little bit, but not but not too much. So I think, and we don't want to crash the car. So let me let me go ahead and move that car a tiny bit more. And there we go. I think that that looks good. The other thing that I want to do that I'm noticing is let's go ahead and move this car forward a little bit. And if I can select it, and there we go. Let's just move it right here and then I'll go ahead and move and just organize. I just want to keep things organized. And I'm going to re just rename this. And this one we can just keep maybe on the side. I don't want to be that far from the car, but I want to be able to compare as we're, as we're going through. Okay, so now we have the two cars. So the other things that I want to do is I also want to change. So if we go back into that car and if you select this part of the car, so that one has the car paint, but and then this one has a car body. So let's change this material as well. I'm gonna go into here, ray tracing. You can see that, that it's making improvements there. And this is just a specular color. We can change it to standard, and then you know we can change them, make it metallic or non-metallic. I'm just gonna add a little bit of metallic to it, and I think that looks good. Let's go back in here, and. Let's go ahead and change it back to a specular. I think a specular will give it a better a better look. All right, so so far so good, right? And I'm gonna change the position of the camera again, so that we can see, so we can see both cars. Going to here align with view. Let's perhaps do do it one more time. All right, I think that I think that looks cool. Now we can bring this car forward a tiny bit more, and then. Maybe put it on the side, and there we go. So I'm going to be making a lot of changes like this because I want this to look great for our demo. And we just go ahead and go down a tiny bit more. Undo that, and then align with you. There we go. I like that because I can see the reflection really well. So another thing that we can also do is we can add different skies. So if I go to the sky component, we can so right now we're using the HDR HDRI sky, and that that's that's what we have set. 
I noticed that there was a new type of sky that we could also look at using, which is the physical base sky, and it's in preview, but it gives it a really cool look. So if I were to enable that, and let's go ahead and change it, so you can see how we're getting more of a realistic sky. I can also change the planet center position, and there's a lot of different settings in here that you could you could change. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I'm just gonna change a few. Can also change the tint, and we can let's go ahead and change the horizon tint, make it maybe a little bit darker and see how that is affecting the scene. So I think I'm just I'm not gonna go through all of those because to be honest, I haven't really gone through all of them, so I wouldn't really know really well what they do. For the most part, I know that it gives it a really cool look. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go with that. Then the next thing that I wanna do is if we go into our lights, right now we just have a directional light. Let's add a different type of light. And I'm gonna do an area light. And there we go. And let's just go ahead and focus on the scene view for now. And right now this is just covering way, way too much space. Let's go ahead and change how much cover we get. Bring it forward. So, and then the next thing that we can do, so if we have that light selected, let's go ahead and go back into, let's go into shadows, enable shadows, and then I think that's every, and then we wanna make sure that we enable ray trace shadows. There we go, and see how. So you also need to change the, I'm gonna change the intensity to do EV100, because this one gives us more control. We can see how we're getting more reflections, and that's what I was looking for, more of a lighting, there we go. <laughs> it just looks really cool. And see how that is changing in real time. And if we go here to the game view, we can see some of those lights just working as hard as they can and ray tracing is just doing its job. Excellent. And there we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into the scene post process and we're gonna add vignetting. Just gives it a really cool look. So you can go ahead and select post-processing. And then let's go ahead and select vignetting. I'm gonna change it to be procedural and I'm also going to enable intensity and smoothness. And I'm gonna increment this value here so we can get some vignetting around the edges. And we can do something like that, works. Perfect. So let's go ahead and change the some of the values on the, on the fog. I'm going to decrement it increment it a little bit there so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play around and then just make it look a little bit better so I'll just go ahead and do a couple of tweaks and then I'll just come back as soon as I'm done All right, so the last thing that I wanna show you is how this looks on the final version. So I just go ahead and hit play. And we can see everything getting rotated in render. So we're getting a lot of detail on the, on the floor, on the reflections. You can see also how the reflections from that other car are reflecting on the first car. So everything just looks gorgeous. I also like the fog and how the light is illuminating the car. We can also see some of the lighting bleed over the reflection on the floor. And that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know.